Mirror, mirror. Over the weekend, the James Webb Space Telescope successfully completed the unfolding of its giant gold mirror. Now that the mirror and tennis court sized sun shield are in place, the world's most complex space observatory is considered fully deployed. And shortly before the sun shield deployment last week, we spoke with UCF physics professor Umberto Campens, a planetary scientist with expertise in space exploration and astronomy. You know, he's very excited and he loves yeah. New Six at Nine. In our interview, I also asked him about the DART mission that's right out of the Planetary Defense Office at NASA. That is that if there is an asteroid that is going to be threatening Earth, and let me preface that for with the, with the following. As individuals, we should not lose any sleep over an impact of an asteroid on the Earth. Because the Disclaimer. Of, <laughs> yeah, well, the chances of that happening while you and I are alive or even your children is, are so negligible that that's something we don't worry about. However, as a civilization, we must because large impacts have happened, like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, mm -hmm. and large impacts will happen unless us humans deflect the next killer asteroid. So as a civilization, we must um, act. So we are, the, the, uh, the DART mission, is going to demonstrate this technique that if an asteroid is in, in, in the wrong orbit, we might be able to hit it hard enough with a projectile that we change its orbit ever so slightly, and then it will eventually miss us, right? And uh, so the DART, the DART mission, which is a NASA mission, is gonna be the impactor. They mm -hmm. have a little small um, a set of instruments that are built by the uh, the Italian space agency. It's going to detach from the main uh, spacecraft and it's going to take images of the impact itself. Oh wow! But but they're going to be relatively few because the the relative velocity between the impactor and this small asteroid is large, so that the impact can can cause the the, the largest um, um, consequences or impact. So. And by the way, this is a binary asteroid. It's a primary one and the little one around it. So oh, okay, it's we're going to the little one. The, yeah, so we're going to the little one because it will be the easiest one to affect, right. to change, right? And so the European Space Agency decided to collaborate with NASA on this. And they were hoping to launch there sooner. And I'm actually part of the European Space Agency's team on the ERA mission. And they are, instead of... so. The impact will happen in uh, in September of 2022, this so this year, and uh, the little package will image the impact, and, but then a detailed crime scene investigation will be done by the ERA mission, which is going to be launched in 24, gets there in 26, and does a very detailed analysis of the entire surface of uh, um, Dimorphos, is the name of the little asteroid. We've got yes. a massive telescope out there. The sun shield is opening. Give us an idea of why we should care about this telescope so much. It is, you know, bigger than anything we could fit into any kind of rocket. So we had to make it so that it would unfold, which means anything that it's going to move and well, it's already in space, it's a risk. So they had to test and test and make sure that this thing would, you know, would not fail. But once it's up there, it's going to give us an amazing view of things, of a range of things from planets around other stars to the main reason why it was built, which was to look back in time. So in uh, in um, in space, the further away you can see something, the further back in time you're looking at it because it takes time for the light to travel from it to us. Mm. So with this telescope, we're going to be looking further away than any anything we've done before. And we're we'll be going to be looking further back in time than we ever have. And as as we look back in time for a number of reasons, the, the, the type of light that it reaches us, which originally was visible light, it's shifted into the infrared. So this telescope has been optimized for the infrared so it can see the oldest galaxies when they were forming. It unfolds, it'll go undergo all these tests and checks, and then in another two or three months, it'll start yielding results, which we, we can't wait for. He's so exciting, right? Uh, Campen says he, he expects the James Webb Telescope to produce discoveries of things we didn't expect. 
kind of like the ones we found on the Bennu asteroid, which by the way, I did ask for an update on the Osiris Rex mission. He, of course, has been a huge part of that program. We'll have that portion of the interview tomorrow morning. I also asked him his opinion <laughs> on Pluto, the big Pluto debate yes. <laughs> that has now resurfaced. So you'll get all of that tomorrow. I mean, it was an hour long conversation because yeah. yes. the way he explains things mm -hmm. and breaks things down, it's just so fascinating. When I asked him, what is he most excited for in the telescope? He's like, I'm just so excited for the things that we don't even know that we could be excited yes. for. So can't wait to see some of those photos. We'll I sign up for smarter. his class, right? Yeah, he is brilliant. <laughs>